Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at a ceremony held at Sakhir Palace the credentials of four new ambassadors to Bahrain. The ambassador of Syria to Bahrain, Mohammed Ali Ibrahim, arrived at Sakhir Palace, where he was received by the Royal Chief of Royal Protocols, and the usual protocols were performed. His Majesty received the credentials of the Ambassador and exchanged greetings with him, praising the bilateral relations and their development in various fields and wished him success in his diplomatic tasks and enhancing friendship ties and cooperation with the Kingdom. The ambassador of Sri Lanka to Bahrain, Hirath Modian Silaji, arrived at Sakhir Palace where she was received by the chief of royal protocols and the usual protocols were performed. His Majesty received her credentials of the Ambassador and exchanged greetings with her, praising the bilateral relations and their development in various fields, and wished her success in her diplomatic tasks and enhancing friendship ties and cooperation with the Kingdom. The ambassador of China to Bahrain, Niruchi, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was received by the chief of royal protocols and the usual protocols were performed. His Majesty received the credentials of the Ambassador and exchanged greetings with him, praising the bilateral relations and their development in various fields, and wished him success in his diplomatic tasks and enhancing friendship ties and cooperation with the Kingdom.
The ambassador of the Philippines to Bahrain, Angela Duan Lewis, arrived at Khir Palace where she was received by the chief of royal protocols and the usual protocols were performed. His Majesty received the credentials of the Ambassador and exchanged greetings with her, praising the bilateral relations and their development in various fields and wished her success in her diplomatic tasks and enhancing friendship ties and cooperation with the Kingdom. The ambassador conveyed the Ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their respective heads of state as well as their wishes of health and happiness to His Majesty the King. They also wished the Kingdom and its people further progress and prosperity and hailed the close relations between their countries and Bahrain at all levels. The ceremony was attended by His Highness, personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness, a representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and National Security Advisor, the Minister of the Royal Court and the Minister of Foreign Affairs Under Secretary for Political Affairs.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 39 of 2023 transferring a director to the Ministry of Youth Affairs based on a proposal by the Ministry of Youth Affairs. The Director of Planning, Policies and Follow-up at the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Maryam Isa Ali Awad, shall be transferred as Director of the Youth Empowerment Directorate at the Ministry of Youth Affairs. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 40 of 2023 appointing a director based on a proposal by the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports. Noura Ahmed Lablushi was appointed as Director of the Planning, Policies and Follow-up at the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 41 of 2023 appointing directors at the Labour Market Regulatory Authority based on a proposal by the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Authority. According to the edict, the following directors were appointed. Isam Mohammed Isar Madan, Director of the Human Resources Directorate. Shireen Khalil al saati Director of the Protection and Grievances Center. Mohammed Abdullah Saleh al Ahmadi, Director of the Business Development Directorate. And Hussain Ali Abdul Rasul Mohammed, Director of the Communications Directorate. The Representatives Council held its weekly session chaired by its speaker Ahmed Lim The council approved a draft law ratifying an agreement between Bahrain and Japan to encourage and protect investments. It also approved a draft law ratifying the Artemis Accords principles for cooperation in the civil exploration and use of the moon, Mars, comets and asteroids for peaceful purposes. A proposal on the government sending a number of doctors to study emergency medicine abroad was also approved. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, received a telephone call from the Jordanian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates, Dr. Ayman al Safadi. The Jordanian Minister briefed Minister Zayani on the outcomes of the consultative meeting held in Amman between the Saudi, Jordanian, Egyptian, Iraqi, and Syrian Foreign Affairs Ministers, which was a follow up of the meeting held in Jeddah on April 14th for the Foreign Affairs Ministers of GCC countries, Jordan, Iraq, and Egypt, to begin talks aimed at resolving the Syrian crisis in line with the Security Council's decision number 2254 and the repercussions of the humanitarian, political and security crisis in Syria, as well as fulfilling the aspirations of the Syrian people for security, peace, stability and prosperity. An implementation of the Royal Directors of His Majesty the King and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has begun to follow up on the affairs of Bahraini citizens and residents in Sudan as more than 90 citizens and residents have been evacuated from Sudan. More in this report. As part of the evacuation process carried out by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, following the unfortunate armed confrontations taking place in Sudan, a number of Bahraini citizens arrived in the country yesterday as part of the evacuation process. The Consulate General of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Jeddah took the initiative to receive them and provided them with the all necessary support and care until they leave for the Kingdom of Bahrain this morning. A number of citizens and residents of Sudan arrived in the country today as part of the evacuations carried out by the UAE in cooperation and coordination with the Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Abu Dhabi. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs in coordination with the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Health received them at Bahrain International Airport, provided them with the required facilities and conducted the necessary health checks to ensure their safety. The evacuation of Bahraini citizens stranded abroad comes as part of the kingdom's relentless efforts to provide the necessary care for citizens outside the kingdom, preserve their safety, and facilitate their return to the homeland safely and securely. The Minister of Social Development, Osama al Asfur, participated remotely in the extraordinary session of the Council of Arab Ministers of Social Affairs, which was convened by the Arab League General Secretariat to discuss the humanitarian and social conditions in Sudan. The session focused on the humanitarian and social conditions in Sudan as a result of the armed clashes, where the minister expressed Bahrain's solidarity with Sudan, which is facing a difficult situation. Al Asfur reiterated the kingdom's call to de-escalate and seek a peaceful settlement between all parties to avoid worsening the humanitarian situation in Sudan. He he voiced Bahrain's support to international efforts to provide all social and humanitarian aid, which would contribute to approving, improving the situation in the country and help end the crisis. The social insurance organization announced the acceptance of all applications submitted to ensure productive families that meet the conditions according to the Khutwa program to enable home-based entrepreneurs to participate in the social insurance system. This allows productive families to benefit from the insurance coverage and practice home production activities until they fulfill the periods qualifying for the retirement pension. In this regard, the SIO affirmed the importance of providing the necessary documents required to join the previous period in accordance with the provisions of the de decision. 
The Tenders and Auctions Board announced that it's recorded remarkable results by applying the ideal method of offering tenders, auctions, government purchases and sales during the year 2022. More on this report. Continuing to follow up the best international practices and in continuation of the approach laid down by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the tenders and auction board witness an increase in the percentage of public tenders offered to reach 83.1% of the total number of tenders offered compared to the past four years, while limited tenders recorded a decrease positively, reaching 13.3% of the total number of tenders compared to 2021. The percentage of tenders offered also recorded a positive decrease in the direct contracting method from 4% in 2021 to 3.6% in 2022, surpassing international best practices with regard to direct contracting. In addition, this decrease, which came in a positive way, confirms the size of the efforts devoted by the board to translate the aspirations of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to support the economic process by enhancing competitiveness between suppliers and contractors. The board is keen to continue paying attention to the indicator of responding to requests received from partners and in accordance with the time plans set in a clear and tangible indicator that proves the importance that the board attaches to the speed of response to requests received, which ensures the provision of services and the implementation of government projects. In addition, the tender board continues its aspirations to adopt the best international practices in order to improve the field of tenders, auctions, procurement and government sales and bring it to international levels and standards based on the values of integrity, transparency, justice and equal opportunities, which are the most important pillars of the comprehensive development process and confirm the clear strategy strategy it implements in order to continue the march of development to enhance the kingdom's position on a global level.